Today, we're going to show you how to travel northern Vietnam, arguably the most beautiful part of this amazing country. A country we used to call home in 2018 and a place that changed our lives forever. If you're looking for the perfect northern Vietnam itinerary, you've come to the right place. We're going to be starting our trip exploring the charming streets and tastes of Hanoi. We'll then head up to the old capital of Vietnam, Ninh Binh, where we climb dragon mountains and kayak past beautiful temples surrounded by lime pillars. After that, we head to Sapa to trek with locals through the most beautiful rice terraces in the world. And finally, we end our trip on board a five-star luxury cruise in Haolong Bay. This entire trip was made possible by Vietnam Escape Tours. They're a locally owned awesome tour company that have planned absolutely everything for us. So if you're looking for someone to plan your perfect trip, head to the link in our description. If you're new around here, we're Rhett and Claire, full-time travelers from South Africa. We travel to the most beautiful, popular destinations in the world and create the most informative guide videos. And we do it for you, Brew, to help make your travels easier. We flew into Hanoi International from Chiang Mai, Thailand. We picked up some SIM cards for $15 and Vietnam Escape Tours were waiting for us at the airport to shuttle us to our hotel. Smoothest travel day ever. Hello, how are you? Fine and you. Nice to meet you. Having the support of a local to pick you up, give you a water and take you to your hotel is honestly priceless, especially if you're traveling to a completely foreign country. First stop on this epic trip is going to be Hanoi. Hanoi is going to be our base from which we explore Ninh Binh, Halong Bay and Sapa. During your time here in Hanoi, you're going to want to stay anywhere in the old quarter. Accommodation is incredibly affordable here. Actually, everything is because Vietnam is one of the cheapest countries in the world to travel to. The old quarter is incredibly charming. It holds a lot of history and you can find Airbnbs, hotels and hostels for as little as $20 a night. Since we landed mid-afternoon, the first thing we did was go grab a pho and some spring rolls at Met Vietnamese restaurants. This is actually a train restaurant here, so they have locations all over Hanoi. It's a great option for a safe first meal in Vietnam. After lunch, we took a quick stroll around the old quarter to get a feel for the city. We honestly love the vibe here. It's so authentic and culturally rich. We booked this basic loft Airbnb for $20. It was a little small, but served its purpose perfectly. We'll leave the link in the description for you. Xin chào Vietnam! Man, it feels so good to be back. How do we start a morning in Vietnam? Easy. We start with a banh mi and a cafe soda. Oh, thank you. It's so small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go where Red can fit. First stop is at this viral cafe called The Note Coffee. The cafe culture in Hanoi is massive and so is the coffee culture in Vietnam. You'll see there's many different variations of coffee. Here in Vietnam, we're going to be trying the three most popular, starting with a cafe soda at this crazy place. This cafe is the most visited cafe in Hanoi and you can tell by the bajillion different notes stuck on the walls here. Basically you come and get a drink, you write a little note, stick it on the wall and you've got a memory here in Vietnam for life. It's super cute. Highly recommend. <laughs> Definitely recommend you spend a bit of time reading. There's a lot of words of wisdom on some of these notes. Like this one right here that says, take every opportunity presented to you, don't say no. Basically be a yes man. I see one over there that says, I wish you were here with me, mommy. <laughs> Our note that we're going to be leaving is Ubuntu. And it's a also word for I am because we are. And it basically supports collectivism over individualism. And it goes together with the quote that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Love it. It's right next to another one that says UCT, the University of Cape Town. <laughs> How awesome. After breakfast, it's time to explore. There are loads of cool spots and things to do in Hanoi. Some of the top things are listed on the screen now, but you can also book a half day city tour on Get Your Guide. We'll link our favorites in the description for you. 
There's a lot of history and museums to explore, but... We are not going to do the museums this time around. We lived in Vietnam for nine months. We did the War Remnants Museum in Ho Chi Minh City. We saw the prison in Phu Quoc, and it's a very deep and dark history. But if you've never learned about the history of Vietnam, then you do have to come to the museums here in Hanoi. For lunch we've come to this Buncha restaurant. It is famous because Anthony Bourdain actually brought President Obama here for lunch once. Guys, there are pictures of Obama everywhere in this restaurant. It's so cute. They've even made an Obama combo so you can get the exact meal that Obama tried here to get the full experience. We've just gone with the special buncha and the fried seafood roll. We're skipping the Hanoi beer <laughs> for today. And it's 120,000 baht for that full meal, which is pretty good, eh? It's quite a cool experience. There's four levels to this restaurant. Every level is packed, so it's super famous. You just have to come here. It's, it's quite a cool experience. <laughs> It's like a burger patty, it's so delicious. Got some fresh veg, rice noodles, beautiful sauce. I love this, this is so good. We are done, that was absolutely delicious. How it works is you just walk in, go sit down at the table, they'll serve you straight away, give you a little slip, and then you go to the exit and pay there. It's super, super efficient. The next iconic thing to do here in Hanoi is to come to the famous train street and you can walk along it and find a cafe that's awesome, that's cute looking. You come and plonk yourself down, order yourself some drinks, some snacks, you can even get food and then you wait for the designated time that a big ass train will come through here and literally wipe past us. It's so crazy, I'm so excited. They say the train is coming very soon though. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> the lady got such a fright she's like pushing us back they're so scared of something happening to tourists here that's why they actually regulate the streets as you come in the police will stop you You're only allowed to come into the streets if you are staying at one of the cafes and sitting to the side you can't just walk willy-nilly up and down this road so that's good I'm wondering if anyone's actually gotten hurt here though we can actually wait for the next train it's coming in 20 minutes we're on our second coffee of the day and there are three very popular types of coffee here in Vietnam. This morning we had cafe soda, that's like the go-to. Now I'm having a coconut coffee and this is honestly one of the favorites. It's really, really good and refreshing. And then later on on the food tour we're going to try egg coffee. And I think that might be my favorite actually. Let's uh, carry on with our adventures, shall we? In the evening, our guide from Vietnam Escape Tours took us on a walking street food tour. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm ready. From one and a half hour to uh, nearly two hours. Okay, cool. Okay. And we're filming a video today. Yeah, oh, for right. YouTube. Say hello. Oh, hey. Nice to meet you, right? <laughs> we got to eat more iconic Vietnamese food, learn about the history of Hanoi, and of course, try some egg coffee. Egg Love coffee! Egg coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious, and you just have to give it a try. You can watch that whole video linked above and in the description. If you're not tired after the street food tour, then you can quickly pop in to watch the Water Puppet Show. There are shows throughout the day, every day of the week. It's about an hour long and you can purchase tickets at the door. It does sometimes sell out though, so if you don't want to miss it, purchase tickets beforehand on Get Your Guide. If you don't cover everything to do in Hanoi on your first day, don't worry. You're going to be coming back here quite a bit throughout the trip. Welcome to Ninh Binh. We have caught a bus all the way from Hanoi to here. It took about two hours, not even. And at first we thought it was super touristy, but this 
This is unbelievable, guys. It's so beautiful here. The lime cliffs are so dark in color. They're black and the vegetation around here is so green. It's just, it's picture perfect, guys. Wow. Oh, sorry, I'm getting up in your grill there. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> they just took photos of us. Xin Chao, we are at Hao Lu, which is the first capital of Vietnam. This area is like a thousand years old. There's some beautiful temples here. And I think the ashes of the first king of Vietnam is here as well. And the limestone cliffs again, amazing. Ladies had to cover up because it is a temple and they do worship the old king there. Ninh Binh was the first capital after Vietnam broke away from China and that dynasty. And basically they chose this area because of the landscape. It's really easy to defend. It's circled by a river, but it was only the capital for 42 years because they moved it to Hanoi. It's back to the bikes for us. I must say it's been really fun to just travel around this area with these bikes, much better than just going in a car or a motorbike. So we've made it to Trang An, which is basically a big, big river that goes through the lime cliffs. It's rainy season, so it's drizzling now, and they gave us a little umbrella. And entrance here is like 250 dong per person. And I decided to get myself a Vietnamese hat because I feel like this is just the best place to take photos with a Vietnamese hat. However, they're making us wear these life jackets, and I don't know if I can take it all for a photo. No. We're about to go into a cave and uh, apparently we've got to watch our heads. We could hit them on the roof of the cave. Yeah. the lying dragon mountain 500 steps all the way to the top let's do this 20 steps in already out of breath legitimately feels like we're doing the stair master <laughs> but guys ooh, I think it's gonna be so beautiful at the top we're already so high up Make sure you are covered by safe doing before you come up the Dragon Mountain. I think that would be a smart move because I don't think this is very safe. <laughs> Holy shit, we made it. Feels like we're on top of the world right now. I think I'm shaking. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's so humid and sweaty. Yo. Be prepared, bring water. It's not easy. It's not for the faint hearted. Literally, look at Rhett. He could just fall to his death on the Chap, this looks insane. Hold on tight. This looks so it's insane. Worth it though. Guys, I think you do have to do it, but really, it is not for the faint hearted. And wear some good shoes because look at the ground. It's insane and it's so slippery, actually. Wow, but please just look. Look at the damn scenery. I'm so happy we came up here. Wow, unbelievable. Now it's going to be extra scary going down, I think. Wish us luck. Guys, I usually don't sweat and I am actually dripping. There's sweat dripping off of me. It must be the humidity and the heat together. It's kind of bittersweet doing that hike because on one hand you feel freaking accomplished, like yes, we did it. And on the other hand, you actually feel disgusting afterwards. Chap, do you feel disgusting I'm too? I'm so drenched. My shirt is two colors. <laughs> we opted to stay over in Ninbin and we're very grateful for that because oh. we've got a short little drive now to get a fresh shower in our little bungalow. So let's go and show you that now. We're staying at Tam Kok Hello Homestay which cost $26 for the night run by the cutest Vietnamese family. The rooms were super comfy and the homestay was super close to the best restaurant in the area. Good 
morning. We have woken up in paradise and this is actually our last morning here in Ninbin. Uh, we just woke up at our homestay. It's been awesome, super affordable and we had breakfast there. And then for your last morning here in Ninbin, we recommend a couple of things. First of all, you should do another little row in Tamcock on the Tamcock River. It's incredibly beautiful from the sky. It's a little different to Trung An because in Tamcock there's rice fields right next to the river banks and limestone cliffs. So I think personally it is more beautiful. Unfortunately, we can't do it though because it's closed due to some I don't know municipal or political reasons we've been told I don't know what it means but this is it actually behind me and then when you at Hung Moa the Dragon Mountain you'll look down onto Tamcock it's incredibly beautiful but bummed that we can't do it but you guys should definitely plan it our aim really for this morning is to just grab a bike and explore the area that's the thing we love the most uh, we're not going on any particular tours you can join other ones if you want just tell Tony at Vietnam Escape Tours but We've met the locals, we got beautiful flowers and Coca-Cola from these ladies. They so Thank awesome. You. <laughs> and then we also really want to see some water buffalo. So we are on the hand for water buffalo in a rice field with some limestone cliffs behind it. I think that's gorgeous. So let's get going. By the way, girls, get yourself a Vietnamese hat, get some flowers from these amazing ladies, come down to the water's edge here. I think we're at Thai V Temple and take some photos here. It's so cute. I just feel so pretty. <laughs> We've got rice fields and lotus farms right behind us. We got our bike this morning from our homestay. We paid 60k just for four hours, so I don't know what the day rate is. I would imagine around 150k. And you can also hire bicycles, which is very common, and just cycle up and down these roads. Very, very easy cycling, not a lot of big hills. So that's, if you don't want to get a bike, I would highly recommend you do that. We explored a bit more, stopped for coffee at Brick Coffee Shop, which had some home-cooked banana bread, and after some hardcore searching, finally found the water buffalo. We started a stare down, so of course we had to try this prank on him. It's time for us to leave Ninh Binh and go back to Hanoi and Vietnam Escape Tours has organized our ride and it's super fancy, oh my goodness, it's so comfy and nice. And then tomorrow we are going somewhere truly spectacular, I cannot wait, so we'll see you in the morning, bye! We were picked up super early for our 5 hour shuttle to Sapa Valley. We're here in the rainy season so there were actually a lot of scary landslides happening and we had to take a lot of detours along the way. Definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to travel here in August. The drive is breathtakingly beautiful but very windy so make sure to bring some motion sickness tabs. Don't worry, it'll all be worth it in the end. Welcome to Sapa Valley, one of the most beautiful places in all of Vietnam. By far the most popular thing to do here is tracking with the locals, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. You can choose to do as many days of tracking as you like, it kind of depends on how much you love hiking. We chose one night and two days and it was great. We've booked a hotel in Sapa Town that has kindly offered to keep the bags that we don't need for the track. Don't worry though, most hotels offer this option. I cannot believe that we have woken up here this morning overlooking the beautiful rice terraces and this gushing river in a little village in Sapa Valley. It's just, it's a bit of a bucket list moment to be honest. Rhett and I truly think that Sapa is one of the most beautiful landscapes we've ever seen. Honestly, it is so green so intensely beautiful these valleys are absolutely massive these mountains and hills are so steep and there's just rice fields everywhere you look oh it's spectacular it looks just like it does online unfortunately it is rainy season so there's a lot of cloud cover and mist so we're having a hard time filming it but the whole experience of being here and trekking with the locals has been just amazing guys i cannot recommend this enough yesterday we got picked up by our beautiful guide maya this is our guide maya <laughs> and this is where she lives look at this gorgeous landscape <gasps> and we're climbing all the way down there <gasps> excited yes, we're going to walk from here to the village here is where i live and here is where i born it's all rice mountain beautiful landscape green color 
It's fantastic, perfect views. Oh, it really is. I'm jealous. I wish I lived here too. <laughs> she was born and raised in Sapa Valley. She took us out for a feast, an absolute feast before the hiking because it is quite an intense hike to be honest. I think yesterday we did about seven kilometers and that was only half. We had to jump on a bike quickly <laughs> and uh, come to the homestay before the rains got us. And then two other local ladies joined us for the whole way as well and they were so kind and sweet and they were dressed in beautiful sapa outfits it honestly was like one of the most adventurous days we've ever had you be careful too yeah you too you yeah. oh. Oh. yeah slowly yeah you also slowly <laughs> okay we trekked through the mud, through the rain, through the rice fields, and we had some snacks on the way, some good laughs. It was so much fun. <laughs> and we ended up at this homestay overlooking this river where we're staying with a local Vietnamese family and with our guide as well, Maya. And then we finished the whole day off with some rice wine and another feast as well. Oh, it was just so wholesome that day yesterday. But today we've got some more trekking to do. It is raining, so let's see how this goes. Hello everyone, my name is Maya and I local guide in Sapa Town or Sapa areas. I belong to the local Hmong tribe. Sapa is one of the very beautiful places of Vietnam. Okay. Very famous, very popular. Mm. The weather also changed and the people here also very nice too. Mm. Sapa town, we have our six different tribes include Vietnamese. So all the tribe here, we live in a village and we will stay in the mountain. It's a farmer's life. Hopefully everyone will enter everyone will like our culture and everyone will like Sapa in Vietnam. We always will come, you all come to Sapa. Oh, thank you so much Maya. Guys, really it is so precious being here and thank you so much for showing us You're around welcome. Maya. How do we say thank you in your language? Our thank you in my language is O Chao. O Chao. Okay, let's say it together. Ready? O, o Chao. chao. <laughs> Unfortunately, the rain didn't let up, so we had to abandon our plans for trekking to more of the villages on day two. A lot of the groups actually had to do that, which is a little sad. We've now checked into our hotel, which is really nice. We've been upgraded to a very nice room with amazing views. Be warned though, this hotel did try to bribe us with free breakfast in exchange for a 10 out of 10 rating on booking.com. As a result, the reviews here are really inflated. Realistically, we'd only give it a 7 out of 10. Instead, we went to Little Sapa and some of the places nearby. But what else is there to do here in Sapa? Well, you can visit Fancy Pan Peak, which is the highest mountain in Vietnam. You grab the tram from this bougie looking Sapa station, it'll take you to the cable cars of Fancy Pan. The ticket definitely isn't cheap and the activity really depends on the weather. It's been cloudy the entire time that we've been here, so we haven't been able to go up and we've been told that if we do go up, we're not going to see anything. So we've just decided to give it a skip. What we did do though is rent a nice little motorbike yesterday and go and explore some of the valleys here. Luckily the weather cleared up for us and we got to see some very beautiful places. Have some coffee at this cute coffee shop with amazing views and grab a lunch at a local village. Besides that you can take a walk around Sapa town. It's very charming. It's very beautiful with all these lights or just relax at your rooftop bar. We're headed back to Hanoi tomorrow for one night and then we're off to Ha Long Bay. <laughs> Thank you. You look amazing. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the final stop on our Northern Vietnam itinerary and the creme de la creme is to do a five-star luxury cruise here in Hao Long Bay, a World UNESCO heritage site. This is the Mon Cherie cruise all organized by Vietnam Escape Tours. Honestly guys, 100% recommend this boat. It is amazing and we do think that you should splurge just a little bit when you're here in Hao Long Bay to get that better experience because there are so many different types of boats you can choose we've actually seen a super yacht so you can take it to the next level as well but there are more affordable ones if you can't afford Moncherry but as I said I think you should splurge a little bit on this 
This one comes with a pool. We've got an upstairs roof and a bar. We've got a gym. We've got a restaurant on site and the rooms. Oh my word, the rooms were amazing. We even have a private bar tub in there. And the activities on and off the boat have also been really cool. We did sunrise tai chi, we did some kayaking in the bay. You can go off and see a cave as well. So many things. Honestly, one night is not enough. I think two would be much better. You just get to take it all in more and you get to do more activities as well. We couldn't think of a better way to end your Northern Vietnam trip, honestly. It's so relaxing, so luxurious so peaceful and we're definitely ending the trip on a high <laughs> claire is definitely right this has been a highlight of our trip and for a full video on this entire boat cruise experience click the link above there are tons of other ways to explore north vietnam for example a popular thing to do is the high giant loop it's incredibly beautiful up there too most people hire bikes and do a multi-day trip around there. Definitely contact Vietnam Escape Tours and they'll tailor a trip to your exact specifications in case you want to exclude some of the things that we do in this video. And that's going to be the end of our Northern Vietnam trip. It's been magical. It's back to Hanoi tomorrow for us. You can do one or two nights there and then fly out and honestly I think you'll go home with the most amazing memories because we definitely will. It's been amazing. It's been adventurous it's been tasty it's been fun it's been relaxing it's been a good itinerary guys i think you'll love it thank you so much vietnam escape tours for making this all possible you were amazing highly recommend using them guys they are a locally owned and run vietnamese tour company so definitely support them and then don't forget to stay tuned for our vietnam guide for first timers video that will cover everything you need to know about Vietnam, not only the north, but the entire country. And then we've got a Vietnam resource pack coming out soon. It'll probably be ready by the time you're watching this video, so check that out. It has links to over 20 accommodation options, all tour companies, transport options, where to book your visas, and most importantly, our Google Map link to everywhere we visited here in Vietnam. But that's it for this video. We hope you really enjoyed it and you got some useful tips and info about how to plan your trip around Northern Vietnam. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.